And here we are outside the GSR hospital. Um, this is the building itself. It's on four floors, ground floor, first floor, second floor and third floor, with an area at the top additionally. To enter into the main door of the hospital, into what is called the waiting area. This is where um, patients and their parents come and wait for either consultation appointments or to have their children registered for surgery. Um, it's Monday morning, so it's always quite busy on a Monday morning. And this is quite typical. Uh, lots of people waiting to be seen by the doctors. Or to the section area where all the administration is done. On the wall here you'll see there are some photographs on the wall. And these are photographs of the very, some of the very many children who've been operated on here at the GSR hospital. And this consists of one large room and a small room beyond where the patients are seen. There are no patients there at the moment, but that is where they to a, a reception area off the, off the main hall where some of the computer work is done and just off there is a very small room uh, where, where all the photography is done. As each child is admitted into the hospital, photographs, lots of photographs have taken before so that a comparison can be done with photographs taken after the surgery. Um, walked up the stairway into onto the first floor and here we have some of the private wards. The GSR hospital runs on a system of providing free surgery for any child or family that cannot afford the care that they require. However, Dr. Raj and Dr. Gosler do perform some private surgery and this money from the surgery goes towards paying for the upkeep of the hospital and providing free surgery for those who can't afford it. The second floor, the second floor contains the two operating theatres and the intensive care unit where all the patients go for a short period of time after the surgery has been completed. Intensive care, it's adjacent to the operating theatres which are just round here. It's six beds. Uh, most of the patients are out within four hours and if they're not then they are kept longer as required. With Professor Gosler scrubbing up for his next patient which is a... what are you doing Gosler? A, a unilateral complete cleft lip. On the third and top floor of the hospital. This is the general ward and this is where all the patients, um, a large proportion of whom are the, the children, go after they're um, signed off from the intensive care unit and they stay here for approximately <laughs> two to three days following their surgery, depending on how quickly and well they recover. We're looking here at a little girl who seems to have recovered very well from her surgery and is enjoying life and crawling around. There are, uh, there are 32 beds in this general ward. So we're focusing in on the brown and cream coloured tall building, which is where 71 children from the Clef School project live as their home during term time. We're now inside the building and we're just walking into the big ground floor area which is the communal area where the children play on a Sunday, do their homework during the week and generally congregate. If ground and there are the children all sitting very quietly, very quietly. It's Sunday today so they're not at school and they're all wearing their Clef Project uniform. The girls wear pink and the boys wear green and they're all looking very smart today. And we see in the corner there's a cabinet, and it's a very small cabinet, and that houses the children's library. There are a few books in there for the children to read and to learn. Most of them are in English, but some are in Telugu, 
their native tongue. Our children um, follow a strict regime of yoga and exercise yoga every morning between 5 and 6 o'clock, Monday to Saturday. Um, they seem to enjoy it, they're very skilled at what they do. Uh, they take a lot of pleasure in keeping sofa um, and keeping their minds and bodies in trim. I'm going to demonstrate the yoga. Is it good to demonstrate the yoga? Vrishikasana. Wow, look at that. I think that's quite extraordinary. How fantastic. Well done. Flight of stairs and we're on the boys' dormitory floor. This is boys' dormitory number one. And here we have boys' dormitory number two. And we're just going to go and have a look inside boys' dormitory number two. And here you will see the children sleep on bunk beds. The child has its own bed. They have a sheet. They have their own towels. And as you'll see, between the two beds, there's a wardrobe in which they can keep their personal belongings. If we just move over to here, you'll see that each child has its own plate and its mug. And that they're all kept neatly here. And these are their water bottles. We can also see their school bags. The school bags are provided by the project. And obviously, we're just about to enter the floor with a girls' dormitory and a boys' dormitory. So let's go into the girls' dormitory, which again looks very tidy. And here, this is quite a large room. Corner are all their plates <coughs> and cups. As I said before, each child has its own plate and cup, which they take up to the top floor when it's time for them to eat their meals. An extraordinary area. It's um, basically they're on the roof. Um, and here is where the three cooks prepare all the meals for the children, their breakfast, their packed lunches, or lunch here on a Sunday, and then their evening meal, plus snacks when they come in from school at about half past five, quarter to six. You'll It is of course really important for Arwind to have the remaining surgery done on the soft palate at the back because surgery will be done at the GSR hospital as it has been done with all the other children here at the Cleft School Project and of course it's done entirely free of charge. I think that could be called the smile that would melt a thousand hearts. 